talk about stream erosion and stream deposition. The exclusivity here, the reason we're really looking at this particular type of erosional agent is because it creates an erosional system. An erosional system means that there's erosion and deposition happening uh, throughout this um, mechanism, this, this act of nature. So water flowing downhill through a channel is called a stream. Now, obviously, that can also be a river, a creek, a brook. It depends on you know how big it is really but the general anatomy of a stream looks something like this you have um, stream banks on either side those are the sides of the river any curve in the river is actually called a meander and the base the actual floor um, the bottom of the river is called the stream bed and if I were to look at all of the uh, tributaries those are the individual river systems that kind of feed into one major river we call that a watershed that's the entire area that contributes to a river let's use the Mississippi River for example the Mississippi River empties out into the Gulf of Mexico and it runs through pretty much the entire uh, length of the United States from north to south there are many tributaries that feed into the Mississippi River and when you take into account all those tributaries that feed in, uh, that's a watershed because it all, all kind of feeds into the same river that empties out into the Gulf of Mexico. So the stream itself, a river or stream, uh, the water flowing in it is uh, moving at a certain speed. And that speed is going to be dependent on really three different things. The discharge, how much water is actually being outputted. The slope, the degree of steepness of the ground it's covering, and the shape of the channel that it sits in. So just some general um, relationships here. If I were to look at the gradient and the speed of the stream, as I increase the gradient of the ground, the slope of the ground, I'm going to have a faster stream. If I were to look at the amount of water in a stream, the more water flowing in the stream, the faster that stream is going to move altogether. And then finally, if I compare a narrow channel, a narrow stream channel to a wider stream channel, um, the more uh, wide a channel is, the slower it's going to travel. The water is going to actually be much slower in that wider stream bed. So a younger river system will have steeper gradients, faster speeds, rapids, and a lot more erosion than deposition because the water's moving fast, it's cutting away uh, and carrying away sediment. So you have a lot more erosion taking place. Um, older rivers have much more gradual slopes. Uh, they have wider channels like you see in this picture, very slow movement overall big meanders, big curves, and I'll show you that in a, in a few more slides from now, and a lot more deposition than erosion because you have slower moving water. As water slows down, it's going to drop off whatever it's carrying. So in a straight stream, the water is flowing the fastest in the center, close to the surface. The problem is streams don't really flow straight for very long. There always seems to be a curve or a bend in a stream and when a stream channel curves the faster moving water is going to shift to the outside so if just follow the um, animation here in this part of the stream we have a straight part of the channel so the water is fastest down the middle but from C to D I have a curve so now my faster moving water is going to be forced to the outside of that curve so that's my faster moving water and then from E to F, my faster moving water is going to be pushed to the outside again, which makes it moving faster at F. Now the reason this has to happen is because water uh, is trying to keep up. So if it's moving fastest in the middle when it's straight, when you have a curve, uh, the inside of the curve has to move slower and the outside of the curve has to move faster. Same thing over here from E to F. Now it's reversed. The outside of the curve has to move faster to keep up with the inside of the curve, which has to move slower. So those of you who have run on a track before may know this already. 
that if you're running a race, the people on the inside have a much shorter distance than the people on the outside. So if you're running on the outer lane, you have to cover more ground than the person on the inside. This is the same mechanism going on with a stream when it, when it uh, goes around the bend. So tying this back into erosion and deposition, faster moving streams pick up and carry away sediment. That's erosion. When streams slow down, they will drop off some or all of the sediments they're carrying. That's deposition. So in our stream example, when a stream is slowing down, which is the inside of a curve, they'll deposit sediment. When a stream is speeding up on the outside of a curve to keep up, they'll do more erosion. So in a stream channel like this, I have an erosional, erosion and depositional system. So at A, because the stream is going faster, it's on the outside of a curve, more sediments are being picked up and carried away, there's a dominant erosional force because of the higher speed. On the opposite side, because the stream is slowing down to keep up with the higher speed at A, there's more deposition. It's deposition dominant. Now it reverses down at the bottom because C, we have the uh, inside of the curve, there's more deposition, and then at D, that's the outside of the curve, there's more erosion. When we look at the stream bed, all right, if we were to take a cross section of our example and say, okay, from A to B, what would the actual shape of the stream channel look like? All right, we know that there's going to be more erosion at A and more deposition at B. What would that do to the stream channel itself? Just take a look at the three choices and uh, select the best one. So if you chose choice two, you'd be correct. The reason choice two is the best choice is because there's more erosion going on at A, so that's a much steeper channel or steeper part of the channel, and there's more deposition going on closer to B, so you have a much more gradual rise from deposited material. All right, take a moment now to look at this example and choose which one, A or B, would erosion be more dominant over deposition. So at A, deposition is dominant because we have slower moving water. It's on the inside of a curve. You can even see it in the example. That beach, that sediment there is from deposition. And then at B, that's where erosion is more dominant because it's on the outside of the curve and the water has to travel faster to keep up with the inner part of that curve. Try this one. Which of the two locations would now deposition be more dominant over erosion? If you chose B, that's correct. Deposition is dominant because it's on the inside of the curve. Where A is, that's on the outside, and that's where erosion is dominant because we have faster moving water on the outside of curves. Going further with this, due to erosion and deposition, meanders, these side-to-side -side bends, get wider over time. So they actually bend further away from each other. And um, if this continues, if erosion and deposition continue long enough, the meanders get so wide that they cut off themselves from the river itself and they form these structures called ox bow lakes. If you think of an oxen, it has that thing, that yoke around its neck, that's where they get the name from. So there, here are a couple of ox bow lakes, which were part of the river system. They were meanders, they were turns, they were bends in the river, but deposition closed them off because of the speed of the water from the rest of the river system. So streams, uh, also deposit sediments as they enter large bodies of water like lakes, oceans, and other rivers. Just We talked about this with deposition. And as the water slows down uh, and as it enters into a larger body of the water, the sediments are going to be deposited according to those characteristics we already discussed. Size, shape, and density. In this example, you can see that it's organized by size. Pebbles, sand, silt. What would X be? X would have to be whatever smaller than silt, which is clay. Now, this mechanism is called horizontal sorting. When sediments get deposited 
vertically and they start to build up from biggest to smallest, we call that grid bedding. It's a vertical sort. Sorting is always a sign of water um, slowing down and depositing sediment. Now, over time, deposited sediment will uh, enter into a larger body of water and start to form a delta. Now, a delta looks, as you see in this diagram, um, from stage one to stage three, it's a buildup of deposited material that over time becomes um, space for fertile ground. You can actually have soil and then it can lead to um, new pieces of new tracts of land. So uh, a, de a delta system, a river delta is deposited material at the mouth or the end of a river system. So finally, um, just to kind of close the topic of, of erosion and deposition of streams, the erosional force of water is a constant abrasive force. You're all, you may not see it, you may not feel it, but um, when water is moving over very quickly over rocks, it's carrying little bits of sediment, and those sediment act like sandpaper, and they break down um, the rocks that they're flowing over. So in general, the rocks in fast moving streams and rivers are going to be smooth. They're going to be rounded. The more rounded they are, the longer they've been exposed to the river. That's it for now. And thanks for watching.